Yeah, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to Campus College. I'm Stuart Williams, the principal, and I'm hoping I will complement everything you've already heard and seen and found out about the college this evening. You join us, um, potentially a really exciting point in our development. Um, we are currently consulting on, on growing and moving from 210 intake to 240. With that will come a £5 million investment and that will allow us to build a brand new science and technology block. And by the end of that development, we'll have nine purpose-built science laboratories. We'll have six technology rooms, two food technology rooms. I've lost count of how many IT rooms. Um, and all of that will be ready by the end of year seven for these students. And on top of that, we will see the development of a modern foreign language a suite of classrooms, which will bring five purpose-built rooms right in the heart of our existing building, and new facilities for our pastoral team and other aspects of our operation. And the great news for people who are looking to join us is that it will mean that we can take more students. Um, for over a decade, we've been oversubscribed which means I have to turn away families every year. It's one of the hardest things I do. And this year, for the first time, I'm hoping we will be able to, to meet demand from our local families. I've put on here how we um, admit students to the college. And it's, there is no catchment area, which um, people often talk about. We only have one feeder school, which is Catmus Primary and the vast majority of students are either admitted because they've already got a brother or sister here and they gain a higher priority or um, because they live local to the college. Um, this year we admitted anybody who lived up to 6.13 miles and then we made a second round offer of 8.6 miles and we make those second round offer because we inevitably there is some movement from when people apply and then they get new jobs and move or there's been a military base move from Cottesmore for example. This year I expect that distance to be further um, because we will hopefully be taking an additional 30 students. So if you live a little bit further away, this is your best year to probably be applying for a place in the last 10 years. Whatever criteria you're applying under, you must make sure that your home local authority, i.e. where you live, receives your application by the 31st of October. If you miss that deadline, even if you're parent is a member of staff or you live right next door you'll be considered late which means you you get considered after every other application has been looked at so please get your application in on time if this is where you want your child to attend I think this is probably the best school in the world and I would hope I say it of course slightly tongue-in-cheek I I say it because I think we offer the full package. We're not just about great exam results or great opportunities. We've got a really great track record of progression onto A-level apprenticeships. We're also more than that, a great community to be part of. We're a school that trusts our students. None of us carry any keys. We don't need to because there are no locked doors. Students can access all of our facilities from eight in the morning. So if you're a working parent, you can drop them off and head into work and your child will be able to come in and get on with their prep, access computers, practice their musical instrument and that's all part of our culture and they can stay till five as well. And then during the day, you, staff don't push to the front of the queue here to get into the restaurant, they join the back of the queue just as every student would. So it's a, tr it's a community in the greatest sense of the word that we work together, we work hard, we play hard but it's a great place to be. And I'm very proud to be the principal here. And I'm also fortunate both my children attend here and are benefiting from these experiences that I'm going to talk about this evening. We accept, though, that transition is, can be quite challenging or can be seen to be quite challenging because students are often moving from very small local rural primaries into Catmus, which can be seen as very big. It's interesting, Year 7s who are doing tours this evening all reassured me that it's not as big as they thought it was. They've soon found their way round. And what you're seeing on this video clip certainly helped. This was our summer school, so staff and students came in for a week during the summer holidays and they got to meet everybody, find out who their tutor was, make loads of new friends. 
get involved with art and games and do a bit of maths and science. And so by the time they started in the first week, they were raring to go. They're allocated a, a tutor, and that tutor stays with them for their five years with, them, with us, hopefully. And they see that tutor every single day. So if they've got a concern or they've got a worry, they've got a, a member of staff who gets to know them really well and will help them out if they're stuck. If they can't find the tutor for any reason, there's always client services, which is just down the corridor outside here. There's always pastoral team staff there. They'll help them out if they've got a headache or they're worried about something or they've forgotten something. Client services are always there to help. And then we also do things like our bushcraft trip. So this is done quite early on. They get to go away for the night. Um, the, the clue is in the name, they have to build their, their habitation, let's hope it's waterproof. They sleep in the tent they've made, they get taught how to make a fire and build a fire, and they cook their own food, and they do this all as part of a team in their tutor group. And then around all of that are things like the clubs that we offer. But that doesn't end there. When they join us, Every year seven is invited to go and see a West End show. Um, these students should have gone to see The Lion King, but of course COVID stopped that. But it didn't stop us putting the show on. Um, this year, students are off to see The Prince of Egypt down in London. Uh, not only do they go and see the show in the West End, they also work with the same actors who put the show on in the Pineapple Studios. And then when they come back into college, their music and drama lessons each week is to, as a tutor group, put on that show. Great way to work as part of a team, get to know other people in your tutor group and again, form great friends. And for you as their parents, you're invited back in and you get to see them watch, sit and watch their show. Really great introduction into year seven. And so very quickly, students find themselves feeling at home at the college. And they might start to turn their minds to what they might want to be when they grow up, if they haven't already. And of course, we also have our own dedicated careers advisor who will help them along the way. But whatever their dream might be, whether they want to become a translator and need to learn two different languages, or they want to be a scientist and take physics, chemistry and biology, or they want to be a footballer, there will be the opportunities and the subjects to study and the broader offer that will allow them to fulfill those dreams. And it starts with the subjects they study. So in primary, they are probably taking English and maths every day, um, or literacy and numeracy as they may know it. And the same is not quite true at the college. They take all of those subjects in grey over the course of the week, really great mix. And as they become more confident, and more have got an idea about what they want to do when they grow up in year nine, they choose their options. And there is a huge breadth of options that they can choose. So if they wish to be an architect, they could take art and design alongside physics, chemistry, and computer science. If they want to become a chef, there's hospitality and catering. If they want to be a plumber, there's technology courses. And so there's a huge breadth of subject offer that really allows students to specialise in what they wish to do when they leave here. But learning isn't just what goes on in the classroom. I was fortunate to be probably one of the last trips out in February of 2020, and I took a group of great students to Iceland to do GCSE photography. And we did landscape photography, photographs like this, which subsequently, of course, appeared in their GCSE portfolios. And although it was about photography, we also had great fun with the snow, including with an Iceland flag. Where he got an Iceland flag, I still do not know. Got to see glaciers, and it was a, an amazing experience. But it's not the only experience. Behind that, scrolling past, are over 100 different trips and visits that happen every year. Admittedly, there's been a few less in the last 18 months. But the ones in green that have scrolled past are all ones that have either happened or are about to happen. And so you can see the hairspray theatre trip on there. That's actually going tomorrow, and I'm fortunate enough to be going on it. So after this late night, perhaps I can have a snooze on the coach on the way to the theatre. You never know. But lots and lots of trips and opportunities. 
And our favorite bit in the week is our electives. So there's about 83 electives listed on there. Um, in a normal year, I'm told by my year 11 students that there's normally about 138, so they are disappointed by the offer of the 80 this year, because of course we've had to slim it down for obvious reasons. I'll avoid using the C word again. But there's some great opportunities nevertheless. So if you're a really art and crafty thing, person, you could get involved in the pottery throwdown where you get to use a proper pottery wheel, which is one of those things that spins around really quick. You throw a lump of pottery on, and then you can turn it into a bowl or a cup. We're very fortunate to have, I think, five pottery wheels. In a normal lesson where you've got 20 or so more students, it's hard to use the pottery wheels. In electives, we can get the class sizes right down and give that specialist time. If pottery is not your thing, perhaps animals are. You're a budding vet. You might want to choose the Go Wild elective. Not my thing. I went along and I was not going to hold the nine foot long python. And the parrot did have a go at me. Never had a go at anyone else. I guess that's the thing about being the principal. Um, but lots of different animals to, to get used to, to learn about, and that's all part of the Go Wild elective. And if that's not your thing, perhaps water sports are. There, for the very reasonable price of just £45, you get six weeks of going to Rutland Water to go on the water sports, where you learn all of those different things, from paddle boarding to using the, the big outside fun things as well. But as you can see, there's 80-odd different electives. Normally, it's well over 100. Students choose a number over the course of the year. They do six, different one each term, so they don't get bored. They're short courses, really engaging, no exams, and it's the favorite time of the week for both students and staff, because it gives a slightly different type of study to their normal in lesson. We like to compete. We love to win. Now, we don't mind losing on occasion, but just not too often. Um, and we, we get involved in the local varsity competition. That's a sporting competition between the six local schools, three in Rutland and three in Melton. We enter all 20 different sports. We always put a team out. Um, students love getting involved. There's a different um, practice going on every night of the week. I do not exaggerate. Um, and we've won every year that I can remember. I've blanked out one year where a member of the PE team broke a leg and we lost by a couple of points. I've forgotten that year, but every other year we've won. And we also do other different aspects like trampolining. Um, there is um, a student in a minute about to do gymnastics. Uh, it's not part of varsity, but we still entered a competition and got all the way through to the national finals with it. And we link really nicely with local clubs. The, the drone footage going on was straight after the COVID lockdown where schools were struggling how to do social distancing and do sport. We are always problem solvers at Catmus, and so we took the entire year group out, socially distanced, and did sport outside for a period of time until the rules relaxed a little. So a huge array of sport, great competition, great opportunities for every single student to get involved in something over the course of the year. And if that's not your thing, that's okay. Mary makes the sun shine bright. Oh, happiness is blooming all around her. And that was George and Phoebe performing for Mary Poppins. It should have been in a packed house over four nights. Um, but we couldn't do that, so we got them to perform in front of a green screen and recreated the production and then we were able to send that home so that students didn't miss out and more importantly perhaps neither did parents. And then this video clip is showing some highlights from our Christmas concert. That would normally be an All Saints in the centre of Oakham uh, and instead we had to do some of it virtually, some of it socially distanced, but we nevertheless put on a, on a full Christmas concert. And performance is a, a big part of what we do at the college, whether it be the shows or the musical instrument. We offer instrumental lessons in all of those different instruments. Uh, if you haven't done it, I would highly recommend it. I think COVID has robbed our students of so many really important experiences. 
and normally we would expect large numbers of students to be learning instruments but because they've been stuck in their bedroom for a long time often they haven't managed to get started and if you haven't already and you've considered it in the past please do think about it. have a chat to our music administrator up in the library and they will tell you how it works here but there's nothing like it in terms of building resilience, practicing each day, making mistakes, getting really good at it, and then ultimately putting on a performance. And the same is true in drama. We offer Lambda lessons, which are again one-to-one -one lessons in either musical theatre or public speaking. And they again really build students' confidence. And if they become a scholar, which they apply for, those lessons can be discounted as well, which is really helpful for, for parents. But really great opportunities. I don't normally show photographs from DOV because anybody who's done DOV will know by the end of an expedition students are looking a little bit ragged, a little bit tired and are unlikely to smile for the camera. This year, however, was very different. I think going back to having stayed too long in their room staring at screens doing remote learning, they were very pleased to get out and go for a good hike. So they do about 16 kilometres a day over the course of a weekend. They're carrying in those rucksacks, their tent and everything else they need. They set up camp together, they cook together, and they, I have to say, had a wonderful time out with their friends without any screens because phones are banned on DV, hence why they're looking at a map, not at a GPS. So the chances are they will also get lost at some point. I've talked a great deal about the opportunities on offer at Catmus, the subjects, the trips and visits, the extracurricular, the sport, the music and the drama. And there's the old saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And at Catmus, all we expect back is you do your best. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you fail. What we want from every Catmus student is to try their hardest, to work hard. And it doesn't matter what, whether it's painting and drawing, craft and technology, revising for a test, or as this young man is doing, having dissected a mouse, he's now doing an anatomically correct drawing, as you do. Um, and all of that leads to, for us, all of that package leads to great outcomes. Our students do exceptionally well and they get the grades they need for their next steps, whatever they might be. But on top of that, they also have all of those broader life skills and experiences that doesn't just get them a job, but makes them really successful in it. But we don't do it at the expense of a bit of fun from time to time. I was expecting a slightly bigger laugh for a walking dinosaur. It took me ages to persuade the dinosaur to walk across the bridge to get that video. Um, and this was World Book Day, straight after lockdown, and we wanted to have a bit of fun and get people back in the spirit of things. During lockdown, um, we were all getting a bit fed up that all we ever did was come to work, which was fine, we like work. However, when you go home, not being able to go and socialise, have people around, and so we decided we'd do something fun as well with staff, and people like me, I was the magic mirror, got involved with a staff panto, we recorded it all and we even did a premiere on the Heller Up with popcorn and then we shared that out to all of the tutor base so they saw staff having a bit of fun and letting their hair down as well. It was a great way to boost morale at a, a tricky time nationally. And so we do really like having fun as well as working hard. And I've talked a lot about careers and wanting you to be successful in life but I'd like to end actually on, I also want you to leave college having made some great friends that last the rest of your life. People who you can really rely on, whether you've fallen in the water on Rutland Water and you need dragging out, or you're burning your sausages on the campfire, or you've forgotten a line on a show. I want people, when they go to the prom, to have a great group of friends who come up with an innovative way to arrive like these guys did. And then when they get their results, this is true, students would not open their envelopes on their own. They waited till their friends arrived and then opened them together so they could share each other's successes. Really great way to end the year. So, enough of me. I'll hand over to Tom and Amy, who did um, speak when they were in year seven. And they're back for a reprisal. So.
Good evening. Uh, you may recognise Tom and me as the head students, but we wanted to introduce ourselves five years ago on the open evening in 2017. Hello, my name is Amy and I'm the new year seven student at Campus College. When the year sevens first attended college, they felt nervous as a step from junior school can be tough. I remember when I came to Campus College open evening last year, learning about my new school. This made me really excited. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Katniss College. My name is Tom, and I'm a head student. I'm here tonight with my fellow head student, Amy, as well as Kiara and Oliver, who are currently in year eight. We are here tonight to talk about our personal experiences, discussing some of our achievements, as well as unexpected perks of being a Katniss College student. Looking back over my time at Katniss, it's easy to notice just how incredible the transformation from year seven to year 11 has been. Some of us haven't just grown in height, but we've grown in confidence, having experienced some of the life-changing opportunities that have influenced and impacted the students we are today. In our opinion, trips and visits form a central part of life at Catmus. We all know the value of experiencing things firsthand, and this helps us learn new knowledge and develop our relationship with our peers. Some of the most anticipated trips include the New York history trip, the German exchange program, and the French trip to La Rochelle. However, as previously mentioned, one of everyone's favorite trips is the year seven theater experience down to London to not only watch, but later perform a rendition of a Broadway play back in college. One of the first eye-opening experiences that allowed me to join the junior choir and later perform on stage in De Montfort Hall. Catmus isn't a place where you come to school, you go home from school, and you complete hours of boring homework. There are so many unique elements that truly set us apart and bring us closer together as a community, such as the Alexis programme every Wednesday, which allows students to compete in activities outside of the campus, such as water sports, ice skating, and horse riding, as well as learning new skills and hobbies in school with teachers and classmates. My personal favourite elective was the Pottery Throwdown, in which I made a floral pot and received a commendation from Mr Williams himself. I'm sure lots of your sevens would have found making new friends hard, but I found it so easy with all the after-school clubs, activities and electives to find my closest friends and grow my eagerness to try new opportunities. During electives and other clubs, you can also meet older students who share their experiences and skills with you. Like Amy, I also got involved in music, which allowed me to achieve a music scholarship, a fun award to strive towards if you're an aspiring musician. Actually, Mr. Williams mentioned, this Thursday I'm going to see Hairspray with my fellow music scholars, so that's exciting for us. From the teachers to the students, from the cleaners to the lovely dinner ladies, this is such a friendly and supportive community that I am proud to be a part of. As you've just seen, uh, in my first term as a Year 7, I gave a speech open evening alongside Amy. This opened up many other opportunities for me at the college. Mr Coop, a modern foreign languages teacher, drafted me into his Rotary Club Youth Speaks public speaking competition team, employing me as the main speaker. After a few early round victories and well executed later round triumphs, we had unexpectedly ascended to the national final of the competition. Weeks of meticulous rehearsal under the watchful eye of Mr. Coop followed as we made the fateful trip down to Exmouth to give it our best shot. I was very nervous, but as we entered the performance hall, I realized that we belonged here. We belonged with the best. We ended up finishing third, and I won the competition's best speaker. Looking back on such an experience four years down the line, I cannot thank the extraordinary efforts of the supporting teachers enough for this opportunity. But you will soon come to realise that this is not an irregular occurrence at Katniss. Teachers across the board give 150% all year. They never give up, and they allow each student to achieve their full potential. My last year at Catmus was far from normal. Not only did I find the adjustment period tough, but also had to deal with loads of restrictions to keep everybody safe. 
However, this didn't stop me having a great year. I enjoyed loads of fun new lessons such as drama, music and art, but it didn't stop there. I enjoyed all of the sporting opportunities as well. From athletics, badminton and basketball, there's plenty of sport to dive right into. However, the sport doesn't end there. If you don't get a chance to compete for any of the sports teams during the year, there's always sports day at the end of the year, which is an excellent chance to show off your ability. From competitive individual, ath individual athletics events in the morning to competitive all-inclusive house events in the afternoon, such as capture the flag and dodgeball, all with the chance to earn points for your house. At the end of sports day, there is an inter-house tug of war competition, getting the whole college involved in cheering on their fellow students. Another perk of being a Catmus student is the use of the facilities at, even after the school day is over. You see, the school day ends at 3.40, but we can stay until 5. This theatre that we're in right now, the art rooms, the music rooms, the, all the classes, they're all available for use even after the day is over, which means that we can use this time to teach ourselves a new skill, such as playing the piano or creating some masterpieces out of clay, which is clay club after school. You can also use this time to complete prep with friends and ask any remaining teachers still at school for help. One of the proud guarantees of Catmus is that they're an experience for everyone and always a new opportunity to learn and have fun. For example, the Academic Scholarship Programme is a unique system designed to encourage and develop students' interests in any subject. I advanced from a bronze to a gold English scholarship in Year 10 and I have to say, some of the incredible benefits from this unique system are one of a kind. From receiving new equipment such as scientific calculators and maths and new books in English to read and later discuss. There are also exclusive new trips, such as Tolthorpe Theatre for drama enthusiasts, the Natural History Museum for budding scientists, and even trips to escape rooms. It's a truly treasured experience to be able to meet with colleagues and peers with a shared passion as yourself. And the food is also amazing. Money for food can be kept on your card, which can be used to purchase whatever you want during break time and lunch time. At break, pastries, paninis, bacon rolls and sausage sandwiches are all available and at lunch it gets even better. From pizza twists to hot food and a range of desserts from chocolate cookies and oat flapjacks. But everybody looks forward to Fish and Chip Friday. As you've seen this evening, Catmus has a plethora of opportunities for everyone to get involved in. All of us here have uh, been offered life-changing experiences by the college. Catmus is not just an exceptional school with amazing opportunities for everyone. It is also a community capable of achieving great things. As we pass back to Mr Williams, we want to thank you for joining us tonight and we hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you guys, that was incredible, I think you'll agree. Um, I do want to correct Oliver though, there are healthy options available. <laughs> it isn't all deep fat fried, I promise. Um, although I do have to confess, I do like the Oreo cookie, um, cookie donuts. Um, I'm hoping you've got a really good flavour of the college this evening, both through the tours that I'm hoping you've had and through these speeches. If, however, you do have any questions that you'd like to ask me, I'll hang around at the end. Please do come and say hello. Thank you very much. <laughs>